Indian desi cows have a sixth sense. When the cows were released for grazing, the cows would meet all the family members and smell them. And then they would go for grazing. Buffaloes would go directly for grazing. Why does the cow check a person's smell? It would check to see the health status of that person and what health issues may arise in that person's aura. They have a great sixth sense. Then the cow would go and eat about 52 types of herbs. You would get those same minerals in their milk and when you drink it, you would become alright. That's why the families who had cows would remain healthy. We stay with the cows the whole day, daily. So even if we have any weakness or illness, we recover naturally. Doing seva of the cows gives us energy. The cow is not just a random animal, it's like a motherly animal. After being with the cows, my tension has gone away. Earlier, I had to visit the hospital every week. Now, I don't have to visit the hospital even once a year. My name is Chandu Surani. I am talking from Shri Shri Gaushala. I have lived in Bombay for 25 years and I was in the diamond business. Currently, the trending topic in US and European countries is that by hugging cows, you get relief from your stress. It calms your mind. This has been said in India from the times of the Puranas. When the prana, life force in the body goes down, then we face depression. Being in the presence of cows increases our prana, so we recover naturally. Here we say Gau Mata. When you are with the cows, you get the motherly love from them. Now that love, you can feel it. Wherever cows breathe happily, people are naturally more stable because the pranavayu is pure. The body temperature of the cow and humans are different. So getting healed from the cow means that the cow inhales and exhales oxygen. And so that makes the person a lively and happy person. The one who is suffering from cancer or depression can recover by being in the presence of cows. Our aura also gets cleared by being with the cows. A few days back, I was stuck in my routine. Office, work, home. And it had caused so much stress. So I came to do Seva and Gaushala. I did it for 3-4 days. After doing that, I started feeling so positive. It creates so much positive aura around you. Since I've come here, all my work has happened successfully. The cow feels like a mother to me. Once a video was released which said that gold was found in cow urine. In Gujarat's Junagar Krishi University, 400 gear cows were analysed for 7 years. In that they found 5200 contents. They found 12 ml to 39 ml gold. It also contained silver, copper, magnesium, phosphorus and more. That's why it's said that drinking cow urine helps to heal cancer and other diseases. Gaumutra has the presence of Lord Dhanvantri in it, which means it has all the compounds that give us all the vitamins from A, B, C to even B12. The Indian indigenous cows have a hump on their back. That hump has the Surya Ketu Nadi that absorbs the rays of sun. And that is why it has gold element which is found in the cow's milk urine and dung. And that's why the desi cows, milk, butter, ghee, all have a yellow golden color. Indian saying is, Go my vasate Lakshmi. The dung of the Indian indigenous cows is considered special. Its intestine is about 160 to 180 feet long. One gram dung has approximately 300 crore microorganism, which multiplies every three hours. This cow dung is called gomai. Where is the Lakshmi? She is in the form of oxygen in cow dung. The fresh cow dung has 23% oxygen. When you dry the cow dung, it contains 27% oxygen. When turned into coal, it has 30% oxygen. Further processing it into ash, it has 46% oxygen. And when cow dung is used in homas, it has 70% oxygen. 
सो दिस इज लक्ष्मी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ऑक्सीजन When the Britishers came, they observed how the Indians were fighting with them without gunpowder, rifle, or ammunition. Indians used to stand up strongly and defeat the invaders. They researched how the Indians were fighting and defeating them. The conclusion was that Indians consume cow milk, butter, and ghee, and that gives them strength. So the foreigners started killing the cows and having them as meals for their soldiers. They saw that the cows were not reducing. So the foreigners started killing the cows and having them as meal for their soldiers. They saw that the cows were not reducing. So they realized that the good bulls are creating good cows. So they started killing the bulls. That's how we lost many of the Indian indigenous breeds. When Britishers came to India, it is said that there were 120 crore cows and 30 to 35 crore people. When India got freedom, the ratio was almost equal. Currently, there are 135 crore humans and 10 to 12 crore cows only. In India we have two types of cow breeds. One is the cross breed that has come from foreign countries. Those are HF, Jersey and Red Dennis. Indian cows are called the desi indigenous cows. They are identified by three parameters. They have big horns. They have a hump on their back which has the surya ketu nadi on it and they have four stomachs whereas the foreign cows have only three stomachs. We have compared them on the basis of milk. The desi indigenous cows have A2 protein, 17 types of vitamins, two types of sugars, and omega-3 in their milk. The foreign cow's milk contains BCM7 poison, which is beta casein 7. It has a negative impact on the human body in the long run. It may result in problems of blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, and more. While A2 milk is pure milk. It contains about three to five and a half types of fats, which are very good for digestion and good for overall health in the long run. Currently, the food and water that we have has become so polluted. Consumption of such foods is resulting in various diseases. To make the foods healthy and pure again, we need our desi indigenous cows. Earlier, the farmers were all self-sustainable. There were no genetically modified foods. They used to sow their own seeds. Today, when one purchases a seed and plants it, the future seeds generated from such plants are infertile. They don't have the prana to grow a new plant. So this is the main point that when Indian farming was based on panchagavya, diseases were not prevalent in the society. Panchagavya farming means the cow dung was spread out on the farmland. Cow urine used to be passed via tracks. When milk, butter, ghee got spoiled or buttermilk was in excess, they were used as natural fertilizers. Thus, panchagavya farming was profitable. Plus, the food produced had a high prana, so there were less diseases. In Sri Sri Gaushala, we have 1325 cows and 18 Indian breeds. We do that samvardhan, that is, rare breed and develop good bulls. Bulls which have a record of their seven generations are brought here to enable this samvardhan process. Till now, we have provided about 450 bulls for free to many organizations and villages. Where there are 100 gear cows, we give one bull for free. This aids in breeding good quality cows everywhere. Gurudev has a vision for re-establishment of Indian indigenous cows. The ancient Indian heritage was based on cows. Gurudev's aim is Rishi Krishi, that is, farming based on the cows, which would give good produce that has high prana and high energy. We should have that again. Having stayed in Bombay, I don't know what quality of food I ate. I lost six family members to cancer over those years. Then I researched that all the earned money won't help me. I have to think what I want to give to the next generation. So I left Bombay. Because being connected to the cows gives good health as well as keeps the family well, and Gurudev directed me to serve the cows. Simran, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on.